So, hey everyone, I'm Daniel Ospina, I'm Head of Governance at the Aragon Association, and I'm very excited here to give the stage to Pietro, who I met recently on a, on a Twitter discussion, and I quite like the ideas that Pietro was putting forward related to governance, so I invite him to, to join, join us here and share a little bit about his work. Uh, Pietro, if you like, start to, with an introduction, and then the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So yes, my name is Pietro. I was, uh, uh, I have a background in math uh, and then in bioinformatics and eventually I started uh, being interested uh, in uh, uh, governance of, uh, of the future. I mean, how to, uh, how decision making uh, could, uh, could work uh, in the future that started about um, 15 years ago, like in 2005, that's actually that's 16 years ago. You all know the the phrase uh, every generation has uh, its own uh, revolution and uh, and i was actually thinking about that phrase and thinking which one is our revolution and at the time uh, wikipedia was just starting and i thought well probably our revolution is uh, a technological revolution trying to set up systems uh, set up um, um yeah set up system that uh, that governs uh, and that cannot be you know, manipulated uh, uh, by by the powers that be, so to speak. And uh, and in the years, uh, I've joined uh, several groups. I had uh, various ideas which uh, uh, grew uh, partially in me and partially with interaction with other people. And uh, it would probably take too long to just go through the curriculum of everything I, I did. Uh, but some of those ideas uh, I will... Uh, present them uh, here. Okay, through the years, uh, I developed uh, several um, several solution for um, for decision making and in particular for online decision making. Uh, and um, and I'm going to present uh, some of them. And I uh, actually it's in my personal life. I'm actually a Taoist, uh, as in uh, the Chinese uh, religion, uh, not just uh, uh, Dao. Uh, uh, we are all Taoists because we want to Taoists. Uh, and one of the things I learned through Taoism is always to start with a simple uh, thing. And then, because if you have some simple and middle and a hard thing to do, if you start with the simple, by the time you've uh, solved those, uh, the middle will have become simple, the hard will have become a middle, and you can continue always doing the simple stuff without uh, making uh, uh, stupid mistakes. So this is actually what I will do. So I will start with some very simple, but also really important solution that I think Aragon should uh, uh, implement. And, and this is, uh, in a sense, like the low, um, the low fruits. Uh, and then there are other fruits that are beyond that and other fruits that are beyond that. But uh, I won't be able to present all of those in a single hour. So uh, in case, if you're interested, uh, we can uh, set up other meeting or something like that. But uh, uh, I, I really believe into giving you a tool with uh, all the everything that comes with it so so that you are, really can use it uh, after that um, here are various uh, solutions with a date the date is pretty much uh, sorry pretty much when uh, i was working in that some things are missing you see there is a jump between 2009 and 2018 i was uh, working but i just was working in other things uh, still related to governance uh, uh, and some are older uh, theorems like uh, voting on a number and condorcet uh, winner and so on but we need to go through them and um, so so let's start with the beginning. Suppose that you need to take uh, a decision among uh, two options. So, you know, shall we do A or shall we do B? Or shall we do A, yes or no? You know, something like this. And there's a number of people that need to take this decision. Then uh, the, the possibilities are usually just, uh, you know, you could have either an absolute majority on one, you know, 51 percent, 80 percent or something like that, a qualified majority, which is 
way more than 50%. Maybe you say, I want, we want at least a 70% or at least 80%. Or you could have a consensus where everybody agrees, or you could have a consent. Now, what is a consent? A consent is something really, really important that you will find that is used quite a lot in uh, systems around, for example, sociocracy tend to use it uh, a lot. Uh, in Vilfredo, which is a system that I developed, uh, we used it, uh, and uh, and other systems also use it. And so the next slides will be devoted to describe the difference between consensus and consent and uh, a normal majority, because I think this is really, really important uh, uh, for what you're doing. And. Uh, if you have a normal consensus system and you say, let's have consensus on this, what you actually mean is, uh, do we all agree on this? Uh, and, and basically, when there is a decision, the possibilities are, are just three. Either you agree or you disagree or you are pretty much neutral. And to be consensus, to be on the boat, you need to agree on that. Okay, but now the consent uh, is different. In the consent system, uh, you, uh, there, is there a question or something like this? No, okay. In the consent system, um, anyone who is neutral also consent to it. Now, this is really important. I mean, I might not like to go to the sea and my kids might want to go to the sea. I don't care, you know, the babysitter might bring them, the mother might bring them, I, I consent. To that i don't i'm not like yeah let's all go to the sea but but it's okay they can go at that point uh, disagree becomes some sort of a neutral yeah i disagree but you know i'm not really going to stop you and then veto is uh, exactly the opposite veto is uh, what you're doing uh, is so much against my values uh, that i will do what i have in my power to stop you Vice versa, on the other side, you also have a division between agree and support. Agree means, uh, yeah, I want this to happen. Support means, uh, I want this to happen and I will help you. You know, this can also be, can be a monetary support, can be a support with time, I can be a support with a network of friends or something like that, and so on. But those five... Uh, possibilities, if you think about it, they are pretty much present in any decision. And, uh, you know, um, uh, kill the rich, veto. Why? Well, I don't think killing is a good reason and so on uh, and, and, and so on. So now let's let's make an example to really understand how those two systems tend to work in a different way. Let's suppose that we have five people Angela, Betty, Claude, Diderot, and Eve, and they are A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, D, E. And, uh, and there are five issues, um, you know, and each of them has uh, uh, either support for some, uh, or disagree, or approve, or veto, and, and so on. And um, so Angela supported the first, and basically disagree with every, everything else. Betty supports the second and disagrees with nearly all the rest except for issue five and Claude. You know, it's it's quite symmetrical, the, the system. Now, if people vote uh, in a normal voting, you would actually get that the first three are mm -hmm. uh, would be rejected because they have a lot of disagree and veto and only one person supporting it. Whereas issue four and issue five, um, they actually would pass. That's that's what we would expect uh, to happen. But now let us suppose that the day before the meeting, uh, once uh, we all know what the um, what the proposals are and who is going to be voting and so on, uh, Angela, Betty, and Claude meet. Uh, and you know they just meet at the station and say let's go and have a pizza and so they they go and speak with each other in the evening and they kind of decide to help each other and uh, so so they basically at this point are going to become like a single unit whereas inside this unit they are going to use as consent and outside they're not going to consent anything if they don't really care about it. 
So, so this is uh, how it normally uh, would have been. Uh, so uh, we've seen uh, how it normally would have been, which is this one. Now in this new version, what do we have? We have Angela that says, look, says to uh, Betty and Claude, if you accept to support me on issue one, I will support you on issue two and issue three. Now, this is something that happens very often in, in governments uh, when you have uh, several parties that join a government. And not only, I mean, uh, sometimes you call it, uh, in Italian it's called voto di scambio, exchange vote. I help you on something, you help me on this. Uh, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. There are thousands of ways in which uh, this is called. And, uh, um, and it makes sense because uh, from their point of view, we said a disagree in a consent system is, is not such a big thing. You know, it doesn't really go against uh, your your deep values. Uh, at, uh, at that point, uh, they can easily consent in exchange to have this thing which they really support pass. And Itero and Eva, which actually wanted the veto over this because it was really against uh, their, uh, their values, uh, their, uh, they vote reject, but uh, they are overrun by Angela, Betty and Claude, whereas the opposite happens on issue four and five. On issue four and five, they all decide to disagree. And uh, and so basically uh, only Diderot and Eve uh, decide to agree on this one and they get rejected. And those two. So basically we are able to get a completely opposite result simply because three people decided to, um, uh, to speak between them and to reach an agreement before, which is something absolutely acceptable in, uh, in every democracy. I mean, uh, uh, that's not just uh, something that is acceptable in democracies, but is uh, very often uh, the base of uh, parliamentary democracies. Uh, I mean, in Italy, the only way in which uh, a government is done is uh, if a number of parties join together to support the government. And they are pretty much saying, we are going to help each other to pass the laws. And uh, um, and only at that point does the president of the, Repu of the Republic uh, offers uh, the government uh, to uh, a representatives of this group. I mean, the, actually it's the opposite way, but the president of the Republic first checks if there is the majority, then offers uh, uh, the, um, uh, to start a government, and then the government uh, checks uh, if there is this support uh, and so on. So this is something that is considered very, very positive uh, in theory. Uh, but I don't see it as positive at all. I see it uh, as a way, as a dictatorship uh, of, of the majority, uh, a dictatorship of a fixed majority. Why I rise this up uh, right now when we speak about DAO? And I'm very happy that uh, there is a person who is involved in the user experience in, uh, in Aragon uh, because uh, this is really important. For the first time in history, maybe, or maybe for the first time in history, uh, forgive me if I went further, it is possible to create systems where this is not possible. Imagine if Angela, Betty, Claude did not have the possibility to meet each other before. They, you know, they simply did not know who were the other people involved. Either everybody was anonymous or, you know, there are so many people voting that you are unable uh, to uh, make them join and you're unable to create a party or something like that. Now, something like this in a normal voting system is not possible, but in an online voting system, it is possible. And so it is possible to actually put back democracy where democracy has been taken out. And it has been taken out by creating a consent system out of a, of a subgroup of the whole group. With this, I'm not going to say that consent system are bad. It is it is absolutely acceptable to have a group of people that um, 
uh, that decided to work through a consent system. You know, each person who is participates has veto power. That's fine. If they decided from the beginning, that's that's absolutely okay and that's great and that's a wonderful system. But uh, what uh, I suggest is not such a such a wise idea, and it would be really good is if uh, if DAOs were able to create systems where it was not possible for a subsystem to make an agreement between them and then impose their will over the rest of the group. And this is possible now with uh, uh, modern uh, uh, modern system because modern system can decide the flow of information. Now, this thing about deciding the flow of information is not something I will speak very much about right now. Is something I I would actually I, I'm not going to speak about in this in this talk. is is very much uh, something in uh, where I would like to speak if on the most advanced part where artificial intelligence as a moderator and so on. But uh, but those are things that you can already start to implement in some ways. I mean, who knows who participates? Is it just the system that knows it? Is it to totally transparent? Sometimes it is good to have a system that is transparent. Some other times it is good to have a system which is not transparent during the decision making, but not transparent to everybody. It's not that, you know, uh, moderators or the chief of governance or the chief of user experience have access to that. No, 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 nobody who should have access to that. It should be cryptographically impossible to get those information. And then after, get access to all this information. I mean, you can make a system which is non-transparent before, but transparent after. Okay, and this is one of the uh, uh, key messages that I want to pass. As you're, as you're designing system for Aragon, consider this. Consider this as a possibility because it might really change the way uh, decision-making works. And, so uh, I'm gonna slide, uh, skip this scale, this uh, slide. And by the way, I hope this watcher is okay. If I die. Please uh, share my message. Mm -hmm. um, so consent scales better than consensus. To get a system that, co that to have consensus, you need everybody to be on board. To have a system where that has consent, where everybody vo votes as consent, which, as I said, by itself is a good system, uh, uh, that scales better. Um, I spoke about a system which is called Vilfredo. I'm not going to present about it, but it is a consent system. That system was used in uh, jails in uh, Costa Rica. And they were able to reach a decision among, uh, I think, 50 women inmates uh, on the question, what, how, what would we like to change in the jail? And what uh, they all voted for and they all consented to was, uh, we want uh, the guards to treat us better. And uh, if it was a consensus system, they probably would not have reached uh, uh, this result. This was 50 people. You know, so it's not a small groups of people, five, ten people, and so on. Second, many voting systems end up as a consent system. Even if you don't have a consent system, if you have a, a majority system, you must pay attention because you might end up creating a consent system in smaller groups, and the, which then implies a dictatorship against everybody else, which is then pretty pretty much captured as an hostage because they have no decision uh, decision power anymore and th so those consent system are more common than you than you accept mm -hmm. but it's okay to have consent system from the beginning uh, so if you need to vote using majorities which i understand is what most people do try to make it in a way that people do not know who the other voters are or do not know what the other voters are wo voting at in that particular moment and so on. And I know this is not always easy and it's not always an easy sell, but uh, uh, this would actually improve actual democracy. So we spoke about um, 
uh, and this I said, online community is the first time where this is really possible. So, so we spoke about a type of outcome when you have two options and we had consensus, consent and uh, qualified majority and absolute majority. But uh, what if you have multiple options? Just a moment ago, we had uh, Angela, Betty and Claude and so on speaking on five options and each option had uh, either approve or, or not approve. Suppose that you have uh, five options and you only want to pass one of them. Maybe you have only the money for one of them or you want to pass one and then decide. At that point, other possibilities are arise. One of them is a qualified majority. Uh, sorry, one of them is Condorcet winner and the other one is relative majority. Now, relative majority is uh, absolute majority means a majority over 50 percent. Qualified majority means a, a majority much more than 50 percent. You decided before it can be two thirds, it can be three fourths. You know, your uh, people are voting the Pope, but they must have two thirds and so on. Well, now it's not like this anymore. It used to be like that. Uh, and then you have Condorcet winner. Now, mm, as I used to do with my students, uh, uh, how many people here know what a Condorcet winner is? Please raise your hand. Uh, Pietro, so unfortunately we don't have the hand, the possibility to raise or or hands here. Okay. Uh, okay. But, you don't uh, have hands. No, we <laughs> we're we're just online, uh, quite anonymous at the moment. Uh, but I would imagine that at least two thirds here are not familiar with the concept. That would be my my guess. Okay. Perfect. No no problem. And. Um, so uh, we are going to speak about Condorcet winner. Um, just for you to understand uh, uh, the, the field that studies all this, uh, also if you want to go deeper in this, is called the voting theory. And, um, and what we are speaking right now is single winner voting system. Then you have uh, multiple winners voting system where it gives you an ordered list uh, or it gives you uh, the first 10 uh, or you gives you an A team, nothing to to nothing to no connection with the with the TV show. And um, and then when people vote, um, there are different kinds of, of voting. You can people can vote with the best candidate and you all know this form of voting is a really terrible form of voting we all know where you just say one uh, candidate you know there are five parties or seven parties I only have to say one and everything else uh, is not I cannot say it another possibility is, is uh, uh, if I say all the acceptable options or if I say an ordered list of all the options or if I say if I evaluate all the options by a number or evaluate all the options by an adjective like fair, good, insufficient, terrible, and so on. And um, and those last two are actually not equivalent. Uh, uh, if you buy the book about majority judgment, uh, the first chapter is about it. It's very, uh, it it's really convincing, I have to say. Um, the second one is the one that you, of course, you use for approval voting, which is quite common because it's a very it's it's a very good um, uh, it's a very good voting system uh, which uh, which is uh, simple enough for people to use it uh, but gives a fairly good uh, result. Uh, but now I want to really speak about Condorcet winners. And uh, thanks to Jerome Lang for the slides. Uh, Jerome Lang is a professor at uh, uh, two university, one in Toulouse and the other one in Paris. And uh, we've been friends from 2009 when I took a, a, a class, a, a course in uh, in voting systems uh, uh, from him and we've collaborated and so on. He's a great guy. And uh, so he has those wonderful slides, which I just use in this case. Now, let us suppose that we need to 
good to vote a candidate uh, and this can be a candidate as a person or can be a you know a candidate proposal and there are five possible proposal available a b c and d and e and you have 33 people who prefers a to b to c to d to e 16 people who prefer b to d to c to e to a and so on so now i qu i ask you who should be elected and um and now plurality voting, which is the one uh, all everybody knows, uh, where you just ask people to vote uh, their best candidate, uh, would have uh, voted uh, uh, A, because 33 people uh, wanted A, uh, 16 people wanted B, uh, 8 plus uh, 3, that makes 11 people wanted C, 18 people voted, wanted D, and 22 people voted, wanted E. Uh, Borda, which is something that assigns uh, scores, uh, gives a zero point to the last one, one point to the to the second last one, then two points, then three points, then four points, would have had a winner B. If instead you use a veto, where you give negative points to whoever arrives at the end, a sort of uh, anti-approval, uh, then you have uh, three pre-winners, you know, B, C and D. And uh, if you get a, a three approval where you just count the first three, then the winner is C. So there are different forms of voting and each voting system, each voting system, by the way, when you study it, you think about it and you go, this is really good. You know, I really think we should vote on this one. And then you read another voting system and ah, this is actually better. And so uh, it's kind of interesting, the fact that you can find cases uh, and those cases are rare, but not completely rare, not impossible. That gives uh, different results. Um, and so, so how does uh, Condorcet uh, system works? Condorcet works by looking at all pairwise. What does a pairwise? For example, I want to know between A and B, how many people prefers A to B and how many people prefers B to A? And if I look at how many people prefers A to B, I have a 33 here. And that's it, which means that I have 77 people that prefers B to A. So, uh, so B has an arrow from B to A means B is uh, uh, preferred over A. So they actually compare all pairwise possibilities you know between a and b between a and e and so on and if you have something from which all arrows goes away it means that this element wins all pairwise comparison so if you compare c respect to a a majority of people won't say if you compare c respect to b a majority of people prefers d and so on so so a corner say system is a system that if it has a, 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 a solution which has this property and this is called a Condorcet winner, it would elect this, this uh, system. So wait a moment, does this mean that not every system will have this, uh, um, not every system will have this property? No, not every system has these properties. In fact, uh, if uh, you change just this one so from instead of a over b over c over d over a you move it from a over b over d over c over a now d ends up being better than c and now you have what it's called a cycle because c is better than b d is better than c and b is a, is better than d so even if you cancel a and E, you you remain with a cycle over here, which is B, C, and D, and um, and so this is called. Uh, um, I think a Condorcet cycle, but I'm not really sure. In any case, is um, is a cycle, and is the reason why. Um, we don't just use a Condorcet systems when there are many Condorcet systems and uh, and there are differences what they do in case of cycles. But um, generally speaking, if you can find a Condorcet winner, and it's not always the case that you can find a Condorcet winner, but if you can find a Condorcet winner, 
then that is considered a, a really good uh, uh, a really good system okay so uh, takeaway messages uh, sometimes there is no Condorcet winner when there is a Condorcet winner this is unique uh, and a voting rule is Condorcet consistent so this is uh, one of the um, properties that voting system can have if it outputs the Condorcet winner whenever there is one okay and so now you know what a Condorcet winner is and now the question is uh, if we are setting up uh, a system uh, what kind of agreement should we try to reach for? And, uh, oh, by the way, so, so what is the best voting system, just in general? This is a list of several voting systems. I found this uh, uh, from Wikipedia. And uh, approval, board account, Copperland, Kemeny Young, which is a Condorcet system, uh, uh, min max uh, plurality and so on and this is a uh, um, those are all properties so Condorcet is uh, the Condorcet property that we've seen now and each of those is is a property each of those is something that you want to have in your voting system and as you can see there is no line with all green yes just from this table you know that among the voting system that we know of, and in fact, you can prove that it's in fact impossible, there is no voting system which will have all the properties. So just relax. We are trying to uh, mitigate the damage here. We are not trying to get uh, the perfect solution. But what are we actually trying to reach? If you have a few people, maybe you can try to reach to look for a consensus. I mean, uh, uh, in a family, you normally try to find something that everybody agrees and everybody wants. In uh, if you have, you know, a team, maybe you will go for a consent. But what about what about the rest? Can you actually say, for example, that having a qualified majority is uh, harder than having a Condorcet winner, and then and that's and and so on? Well, well, actually no, actually no, because um, there are some theorems um, that say that if you have a voting system and you have uh, as the number of participants grows, the probability that there is a Condorcet winner as opposed to a Condorcet loop increases. So it's actually easier to make a system. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, 5 million or 10 million people voting, the probability that you actually end up with a Condorcet winner, it's actually not that, uh, uh, not that high. You also have uh, some difficulties in calculating the Condorcet winner with uh, uh, with 10 million people voting, but that's a, another detail. Uh, but it's still possible. I mean, with computers, you can do it easily. Um, OK, and something else, the technique matters. And when I speak about the techniques, I'm not actually referring to the way the counting system. No, 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 keeping the counting actually there is something else uh, that uh, actually that is not very much uh, considered uh, within a voting system and that's why that's one of the things on which i'm uh, i'm working on uh, in a sense and that is uh, everything around we've spoken before about how if if people are allowed to speak to each other before a voting system, then you can they can create a subsystem that create consent. That's um, and uh, and as in a situation like this, uh, they can impose an absolute majority over everybody else. You know, this is uh, uh, this is the kind of techniques that I say the user experience, the way in which you interact with the people, the kind of information that is shared. All this is part of uh, the technique. And, uh, and this is something I am uh, uh, very much working on, uh, um, even though I'm not a user experience guy. So what is the classical DAO question? Well, the classical DAO question is, what shall we do about blah, blah, blah? And, and you have multiple proposals, usually are more than two, and usually the number is not limited. In fact, new proposals tend to come with time if you wait. 
and you can have uh, many winners uh, you know what shall we do with this million dollars that we gathered okay so now we have a proposal to do this with a hundred thousand okay what shall we do with the remaining nine hundred thousand and so on and but we can uh, start with a single winner and then you know make a second vote and a third vote and uh, uh, and there is a need to reach the result. I mean, you actually want uh, usually to reach a result. And we want as, as strong an agreement as possible. So if it is possible to have a consensus, it's good. If not a consent, is okay. If not a, a, a condorcet, is okay. If not, and so on. And, um, and I'm not going to tell you about this. I'm not going to tell you about this because this is going to take one hour all in it. Instead, I'm going to tell you about something else, which is even more important than this, uh, even if you are not going to believe this before, but you will in a second. And this is another question that DAO have to face even more often and they don't realize to. And it is, uh, how much shall we? How much? And this is, uh, it happens so often, you know, you gathered a lot of, ma of money, you need to decide how much you, do you spend it in this particular project, in this particular endeavor, how much. Uh, and so is a question where you have any number, a num we are looking for a number, and we want one winner, only one number, and there is still the need to reach the result, and we are, there is still the need to reach a very strong agreement over there. <laughs> And so here we go, and it's called voting a number. So here are the requirements. Suppose that you need to find a number on a one-dimensional line. This is not for two dimensions. This is one-dimensional, okay? So it's just one-dimensional. And then let us suppose that each person has its own preferred value. So I ask John, he, he knows its own preferred value. I ask Daniel, he knows its own preferred value, and so on. And then we ask that each person's preference is a single picked. I'm going to explain soon what single picked is, but basically means as you move away from this value, people like the result less and less and less. So if this is the solution, what happens now? I don't know if you heard this. Let me run it again because, oops. Okay, the result is there is a Condorcet winner. Wonderful. And not only this, it's not just that there is a Condorcet winner, it's also that it's easy to find it. And, and to find it, you just need people to vote in an easy way. We've seen before different ways of voting where people would, uh, you know, order all the proposal and no, 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 no. This is going to be a very simple way of people to vote. And yet we are going to be able to, to reach a Condorcet winner. And this is called the theorem of black. So you can look uh, look it up. It's called the theorems of black. And how does it actually work? And I'm not going to go to the to the proof that you can that you can look it online. And first of all, what does it mean that it's single picked? It means that each person has one value that they like more than anybody else, than anything else. And as it goes away from that bad value, the how much they like the result is mono, monotonically decreases. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know if uh, the theorem requires that it is monotonically decreasing or strictly monotonically decreasing. I think even just monotonically decreasing it's enough, but I'm not sure. Um, so, so this is the peak of this person. So you see how much he likes the various results. Another person will have a peak here. Another person will have a peak here. But you do not find anybody who has two peaks, you know, one uh, one peak here then maybe it goes down and then maybe it goes up again and then it goes down again no 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 this is this is not the case and if this is the case then uh, it's very easy to find a condorcet winner and how it's done you ask everybody to vote for their preferred value and you take the median not the average the median you take the median of all the preferred values and magically, the median of all the preferred values is the Condorcet winner. 
So think about the, the incredible, how incredible this result is. You have an infinity of possibilities. You know, all the continuous between zero and one or zero and 10, you have one over pi, you have one over E, you have 2.73425, you have everything inside and yet you are able to find a Condorcet winner just by asking everybody what their preferred value is. This is amazing. And so, so here is an example. Let us suppose we want to buy this Lambo and uh, you know, the Dow wants to buy this Lambo and everybody uh, gives their evaluation and see this is how much the Dow as a unit uh, vote. This is not, you know, this, we are not asking who, vote, who gets, who is uh, bidding higher. This is, uh, this whole group is one entity and they're saying we are bidding 7.3 to buy this uh, small Lambo. And I don't know 7.3 of what, 7.3 Bitcoin is probably too much, but 7.3 of other crypto, more obscure, might be maybe 7.3 Dogecoin might be okay. So how does it actually work? Uh, not the theorem, how does it actually work? I mean, is the result a good result? Yes, we reached a Condorcet winner, but uh, is the result something that we uh, can be confident that, you know, it's um, um, that the result might, uh, is as good as an expert would actually evaluate. I mean, uh, what those people evaluated this car is what uh, a group of experts would also evaluate it. And the answer is yes. And uh, the paper that came out uh, showing this uh, mm -hmm. uh, this answer is the is the paper from uh, Francis Galton mm -hmm. in uh, uh, 1907. And uh, from that moment in 1907, uh, actually, uh, the number of papers that uh, came out uh, about this uh, are uh, have been uh, hundreds. I mean, they're really, really. This is a, a vast, uh, uh, and it's called uh, uh, wisdom of the. Uh, wisdom of the masses uh, and um, and so on and there are a lot of details but basically this guy was working in the walking in the countryside and we came out in a situation where a lot of people were betting bidding on how much uh, a ox uh, weighted and uh, those uh, were uh, uh, people in the countryside each person uh, gave uh, their own evaluation and um, and whoever would come closer would have won uh, uh, a consistent amount of money. And so they had an incentive to really try to reach uh, the result. And this is important, there must be an incentive. And when they voted, the guy who was actually a mathematician and he actually did not believe in Windows, in uh, wisdom of the masses, he actually was an elitist. Uh, remember here we are before even World War II. So, you know, the idea that there are uh, a group of uh, enlightened people and a group of uh, less uh, enlightened uh, people. Uh, it was just uh, what a lot of people believed. And uh, this guy, even though he was an elitist, he actually had the, uh, the intellectual honesty to realize he was wrong and write this paper and showed that actually they, in this case, I don't know if both, in this case, both the median and the average were really, really close to the uh, to the actual result. And um, now some of the experts, I think, might even came closer than the median and the average. But uh, a lot of results came later and found out that if you find, if you have a system like this and you have like 20 experts, now the 20 expert will be around the result. Um, will be around the result, whereas the median of this will always be very, very close. So some expert will be as close as or even closer, but you cannot predict 
in advance which of the experts will be so close. So you cannot actually use this. So, you, so this is actually better than, ask, than asking one expert or even asking a team of experts. And you can test this very easily. I actually did this. You know, just go to a coffee shop or something like that and ask everybody in the room how many um, sugar cubes are in something like this or how many beans are in a bag or something like that. Show them the bag, show them the container and sign the number. If it's even better, don't don't make people hear what other people have voted. That that makes it even better. And then make the median and the median will be very, very close to the result. I've actually tried this and it actually worked. The median was somewhere around uh, it was actually 30 and the number was 28 or 32. And actually, it's also interesting that it reaches the median very, uh, very soon and then it tends not to not to change anymore. I've tried this also in a number of uh, occasions, like, for example, uh, asking to some friends uh, how much should politicians be paid? And it came out some 4000 euro per month, which is unacceptable. You know, it's a good, uh, uh, you know, not zero and not an incredible uh, uh, something else. And then in Italy, they wanted uh, they we have now a limit over how much money can you pay in cash and everything else have to go through a bank so that people uh, don't avoid paying taxes. And so I asked that also and that also reached, I think, uh, something like five thousand uh, euro. And uh, it was interesting how how soon the result uh, the median result was reached, uh, you know, I, I asked some 20 people, but within five or six votes, we've immediately reached the the median has already reached a, a system that doesn't move anymore. So what's the problem instead in voting the average? The problem in voting the average is that a single person can can screw up the result a lot. I mean, if I know that everybody is going to vote or if I think that everybody is going to vote 30 and I know that there are about 100 people and uh, I wanted the result to be 100, I am going to vote 100,000. I'm going to calculate exactly how much I want to vote so that I move the average all the way up. So you have a, um, a system, if people vote the average, you end up having the possibility to manipulate the result very, very much. So the result end up being very unstable. If you if you vote the median, that doesn't happen. If you vote the median, you have the best outcome. If you give your euro the vote that you really think of, you I think the best is 50. I I give 50. If uh, the result of everybody else is 30, well I pushed it up as much as I could. If the result of everybody else is 60. I've actually pushed it down, so it worked also. Whereas if I voted for ten thousand, I moved it up, so it uh, so it didn't uh, it didn't work. Sorry, someone is trying to come here. Sorry, I am using the room. And um, let's questions? move on. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, Luca, tell me. Yes. Hi, Pedro. Uh, this is super interesting. Thanks for being here. Uh, just a quick question. So, supposing you have, uh, just going back to to the example you were showing, supposing you have a sufficient sample size and understand kind of the the, the average of your sample. Um, I'm trying to understand how important the weight of the incentive is in the outcome that, that you've uh, just mentioned, kind of to the standard deviation of uh, of the sample. So, would you say that the the, the, the stronger the the incentive, uh, the more um, the, 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 less the less important other factors of your analysis? I I don't know. I mean, I would suspect that in a DAO where people manage money, uh, the incentive is already in the fact that the DAO should not screw up. Whereas uh, if you want to use this into something else, uh, like um, DAO court, which is going to come in a second, uh, uh, then yes, you need to put in uh, an incentive. Uh, and at that point, uh, the problem is that um, that uh, to have the incentive and the ox, uh, there was uh, a, an objective truth, you know, and uh, the same thing uh, in the number of uh, 
of a cubic uh, uh, of uh, sugar cubes. Whereas uh, if uh, there is no objective truth uh, because we are deciding how much to, in to invest in micro strategy, you know, there is not perfect result. Nobody, uh, nobody can tell, oh, this is actually what you should have done. Uh, at that point, uh, I don't think you can actually set up an incentive like that. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, this is a pro this is something on which we should uh, think about it. Uh, I don't have a, uh, uh, an answer right now, so uh, I think right. about it for another time. And I don't want to give you a, uh, a you know fake answer or something like that. I, one of my things as a, as a mathematician and that it has been very frustrating for people working with me is that uh, I refuse to give answers if I don't have it, <laughs> which sometimes in Vilfredo we needed to wait uh, seven years or no, five years before I added comments uh, because I just didn't know how to put them without screwing up everything. That, that's a very pragmatic approach. Eh? Like that. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Um, so, P Pietro, um, I'm kind of got it. Now, to... some Aragon questions. Uh, how much should we invest in? A lot of DAOs are, uh, you know, like the first Ethereum DAO, you will remember, and, and others are actually handling uh, money. Well, you know, we pool this money together and then together we are going to invest it into something. So how much should we invest in? Now, what should we invest in is another question, is the other question I spoke about it before. But once we have decided what we should invest in, now it comes the how much we should invest in. And um, Pietro, another question is how much, if, yeah? If, if, if I may, uh, because we, we scheduled for an hour and I'm very, very sad to see that we only have two minutes left, I think everyone is loving your presentation and there is definitely a lot more we would love to cover with you so perhaps we could do an another session would that work for you and then we can cover some of the other things like personally i'm i'm very very eager to discuss wilfredo with you and and some of the other uh, more advanced methods uh okay, but... can i have the five minutes we lost at the beginning and then uh, absolutely yes, for the rest huh? That's it's a okay. deal. <laughs> so uh, how much should we invest? How many people? Now, other question could be, we want to have a team working on this. How big should the team be? The latest part of this talk was unfortunately not recorded. So in the next talk, I will start back from the application about voting a number. Thank you very much. <laughs>